I don't actually often get the chance to spend two or three days together um, in one space with a, a group of churches. And I count it my honor to be able to do that. I feel as if God called me and asked me to do that a number of years ago. And it's been an honor to walk with you and to be able to be amongst you. I feel as if I'm in a place that I can call home when I'm with you. And I want to thank you for that. And thank you for your welcome and for your encouragement and for listening so attentively, even when sometimes what you're hearing might be slightly hard to hear. I'm grateful to you for listening anyway. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to do before we start what I want to do. Um, first of all, I'm going to ask you for your help this evening because I am going to um, share with you in a way that I've never shared before. Um, it's, it's, I'm very nervous about it, actually, because I have no idea whether it's going to work or not. Um, but we'll see in about 25 minutes, 30 minutes, I would guess. But uh, for that reason, as I begin to share in a moment, I want to ask you to um, remember that in the act of preaching, teaching, or proclaiming, there are a number of people involved, not just the preacher, in the Anglican tradition or in the Roman Catholic tradition and indeed in the Lutheran tradition. When a preacher uh, preaches or reads the word of God, they will sometimes say something like this, the Lord is here and the congregation will respond. That's a reminder that this is an interaction together. You're not my preaching fodder. I'm not taking aim at you when I preach or when I speak. But together we are caught up in something. I'm speaking to you, you're listening to me. God is speaking to you, and God is speaking to me. The Spirit is knitting our hearts together in a very important and a special way. Now, Pentecostalism does this really well, because when you're in the middle of a preach, you'll often hear a, a really good Pentecostal audience or congregation shouting, Hallelujah! Or praise the Lord! The preacher will sometimes say, God is good, and the congregation will respond. And then he'll say all the time, and they'll say back. Or they'll sometimes shout if the preacher's boring, help him, Jesus. <laughs> I've had that done once or twice. But this evening, as I embark on what I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to ask you to participate in an act of corporate engagement with what God might be saying. In a, in a very intentional way. So if, in the course of what I say, you want to stand and shout, go right ahead. If you want to clap, go right ahead. If you want to shout, amen, go right ahead. If you feel at any point that you want to come and make a response, go right ahead. It's going to be a preach with a bit of a difference. So I'm asking you to participate with me in it. So at least we have tried together. Is that all right? <laughs> Salt and light, a speck and a beam. But these small things are more powerful than they seem. Call this a lament. Call it a prayer. Call it a cry from the heart. I don't care. Call it whatever you need it to be. Call it a sermon. Call it a message. Call it a word from the Lord. Call it a call to arms. Call it a plea. Call it a summons. Call it whatever you need it to be. But listen. Listen. Listen carefully to what God might say to you. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, but when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. Now, we see through a glass darkly, but then we shall see face to face. Now I only know in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. What do you see? There is more to us than meets the eye. Depths of life we are yet to plumb. Possibilities that lie unfathomed beneath the layers of brokenness and sin 
and regret and failure that so often mar our vision of ourselves, of others, and of the world. What do I see when I look at you? Men and women from different cultures with a thousand different stories. They're the widow whose life matters deeply to God. They're the orphan whose story is written not with ink but with tears and with blood on the heart of a carpenter from Nazareth. There's a father who feels a failure. There's a mother who wants to do the best for her children. There's a lawyer figuring out what the right thing looks like. There's a medic who wishes they could save just one more. There's a pastor who have opened their heart to the family of faith and carry the scars to prove it. There's a couple whose house is filled with the silence of the children they cannot have, the dreams they once had folded neatly and tidily in the bottom drawer of an empty nursery, just in case. What do we see when we look at the world? Did the flames of Grenfell destroy faith in your heart? Did the Grand Day concert kill your hope? On London Bridge and at Borough Market, did the attackers cut through the lifeline of your trust in God? When you fled Iraq, did you leave more than your clothes and possessions? Was your humanity left buried there too? What do you see when you look at the world? Has your compassion been drained through the sinkhole of suffering? Have you had enough? And what do we see when we look at the church? A waste of time? A harlot selling herself for the approval of the world? A broken bunch of ragtags, misfits, and dreamers? Now we see through a glass darkly, not just the glass of a gas oven, but the dark glass of incompleteness. We are caught in the drama of a broken world, trying desperately to remember our lines. We can't work out if it's a tragedy, a comedy, or a history. We can't see the full picture. We aren't God. But what does God see when he looks at the world? What once was formless and void now teems with life. life. He sees beauty in the beast purpose in the chaos, light in the darkness, meaning in the senselessness. He sees the world through a different lens, the lens of love. The one who has come to set the prisoners free sees sins forgiven. The light of the world sees darkness defeated. The restorer of dignity sees shame undone. The crucified sees pain absorbed. The resurrected one sees death defeated. The reigning king sees Satan thrown down. The lifted son sees the world in a different light. God has not finished with the world. He is still creating and recreating what he said to Moses. He says again to us, I have seen the misery of my people. I have heard their cry. I know their suffering. I have come down to deliver them and to bring them into a good land. It's not over until God says so, and he hasn't said so yet. He hears the cry of every child. He knows the fear of every boy who has ever worn pea-stained Peppa D pajamas. He embraces failing fathers, 
comforts frustrated mums, gives grit to frustrated lawyers, courage to broken-hearted medics, inexhaustible love to worn-out pastors, and a promise of healing to parents whose arms are empty and whose hearts are wrenched in two. When God looks at the world, he tells the truth. Grenfell's flames blazing evidence of a divided world. Grand Day's concert, a reminder of what happens when religion trumps love. London Bridge and Borough Market witnesses in the prosecution against a world turned in upon itself. And when the displaced run, he looks them in the eye and says, I know what it feels like to be a refugee. My son was one too. But God sees further than we do. He sees the end of the story. He knows how it ends. And it doesn't end like this. The Genesis God brings life and new beginnings. The Exodus God brings deliverance. The Leviticus God brings order. The Numbers God brings purpose. The Deuteronomy God brings a second chance. The Joshua God brings courage. The Judges God confronts our warring hearts. The Ruth God brings a redeemer and a brother. The Samuel God brings anointing. The King's God brings his rule. The Chronicles God brings meaning to the story. The Ezra God restores. The Nehemiah God rebuilds. The Esther God brings destiny. The Job God brings hope. The Psalms God brings honesty. The Proverbs God brings wisdom. The Ecclesiastes God brings understanding. The Song of Songs God brings a kiss. The Isaiah God brings restoration. The Jeremiah God brings promise. The Lamentations God brings a listening ear. The Ezekiel God brings life. The Daniel God brings a plan. The Hosea God brings forgiveness. The Joel God brings assurance. The Amos God brings integrity. The Obadiah God brings mercy. The Jonah God brings compassion. The Micah God brings justice. The Nahum God brings opportunity. The Habakkuk God brings answers. The Zephaniah God brings hope. The Haggai God brings determination. The Zechariah God brings power. The Malachi God brings honesty. The Matthew God brings us a king. The Mark God brings us a brother. The Luke God brings us a healer. The John God brings us the enfleshed word. The Acts God brings us the spirit. The Romans God brings us good news. The Corinthians God brings us love. The Galatian God brings us freedom. The Ephesian God brings us a plan. The Philippians God brings us joy. The Colossians God brings us the sun. The Thessalonian God brings us patience. The Timothy God brings us guidance. The Titus God brings us order. The Philemon God brings us equality. The Hebrews God brings us a better way. The James God brings us evidence of faith. The Peter God brings us resilience. The John God brings us commitment. The Jude God brings us strength to stand. And the Revelation God brings us the last word. God wins. And what does God see when he looks at the church? He sees a bride preparing for a wedding, a vine bearing fruit. He sees an armory, an army of ordinary people with the power of the spirit planted in our hearts and the hope of heaven shaping every step. He sees a temple, pure, perfect, ready. He sees his beloved, his redeemed. 
He sees his hands, his feet, his voice, his heart, his legs, but most of all, he sees his son. And every one of us, the Christ who plays in 10,000 places and is seen in the faces of women and men is seen in us. He sees the band of the broken being made whole by his grace. He sees an army of the ordinary made extraordinary by his power. He sees a community called to shine, called to blaze a trail for the ordinary life. He sees possibilities nestled in the hearts of mortals. He sees hope. He sees us. And he wants us to have fresh eyes. Because anyone who is in Christ sees the world through different eyes. We bring who we are. We bring where we are. We bring what we are. And we lay it all at the feet of the one who will put all things right. We give him our weariness, our exhaustion, our hopes, our dreams, our aspirations. We give him us, all of us. Give him all of us. Because the seed that was planted in Jerusalem on Good Friday was also planted in us. The seed that burst the tomb on Easter Sunday has birthed life in us. This hope is indestructible. This call is unavoidable. This power is uncontainable. This life is undeniable. God wins, God wins, God wins. Stand with me and fight for sons and daughters yet to be born into the family of God, for injustices yet to be conquered, for wrongs yet to be righted. Stand for the lost, stand for the least, stand for the last, stand for all that God wants. Don't hold back, don't turn back, don't give up. Throw yourself into his cause again with childlike faith. Let childlike sight be given to adult faith. Lift the veil and look through the lens of God's love. Let your imagination run riot. Dream of what God could do through me, through you. Let your imagination be stretched for the nations. Let your vision rise above your horizon. Let your faith rise above death. Let God be God and every man a liar. See around the corner, beyond the curve. See beyond the now to the not yet. Hold on to the one who holds on to you. I commission you to this mission. I call you to this task. I draw you into the great adventure of life lived God's way. Salt and light, a speck and a beam. But these things are stronger than they seem. Stand for your God. Live for your God. Serve your God. Go the extra mile. Invade our culture with the grace of God. Embed yourself in the places God has placed you. Shine out the light of Christ in the marketplace and in the worship space. Make a pathway for righteousness in the corridors of power. Let the voice of the judge of all the earth be heard in the courts of the land. Let the glory of the knowledge of the Lord cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Don't back down. Don't look at the world through old eyes. Look at the world through bold eyes. Let life flow into your heart again. Let the vision of God's kingdom enlarge your thinking. Don't pretend you're okay. Let him take the broken pieces of your life and fashion a mosaic of hope. Let him have the discordant notes of your song and turn them into a melody. Let it be a lament. Let it be a celebration. Let it be a declaration. Let it be an invitation. Just let it be and let Christ be seen. And when our bodies are laid in the ground to await that glorious morning of new life, let it be said of us, they laid down their lives for the king. They lived their lives for the kingdom. Let those who come after us stand on our shoulders. 
that they might see further. Let them learn the lessons of our mistakes that they might be better. Let them dream bigger dreams that they might accomplish more. Let them be what we could not be. And now, be anointed for this task. as the oil drips through your hands and runs down your head let the spirit rise within us with fresh power let this be an anointing for service let this be an anointing that is a declaration of war on all that is wrong and broken in the world let this anointing announce hope to all who are trapped and lost let this be an anointing of determination an anointing of courage an anointing of intention an anointing of imagination. Let this anointing be a declaration that when we will fight, that we will fight until we can fight no more. That we will stand until we cannot stand any longer. That we will give ourselves to the cause, the cause of Christ for he is worth it all. What do you see, Lord, when you look at us? Here in this moment, see a people who are standing who are ready, who are willing. See your people ready to live to the very last breath for your power and your glory because yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Salt and light a speck and a beam but these things are stronger than they seem let's worship our glorious God